There's a pretty one, Ulysses. There it is. Hello, Booktube. I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to a birthday party. It's Kendra Winchester's 30th birthday. She's only two years older than me. Happy birthday, Kendra. <laughs> This is a surprise birthday tag put together, as far as I know, by her lovely husband, Sam Winchester. And there may have been other people involved, but I'm not aware of who those people might be. But I was invited to take part in this birthday surprise tag, and here I am. Kendra is one of my oldest friends on bookish social media. We got to know each other on Litzy, which is like Instagram for book nerds. I don't use it very much anymore, but I was big time. I was bigly active on Litzy before I came on to booktube and found Kendra there and she was very warm and friendly and we shared some tastes and bonded on some books which I'm going to tell you about in a little bit. I adore Kendra. We have done some buddy reads together. She's just a wonderful bookish person and I love her to bits. So happy birthday Kendra. So let's get started. Number one. Favorite book by Virginia Woolf and I can't decide between Mrs. Dalloway and to the lighthouse. I love them both with all my heart. I have read Mrs. Dalloway multiple times, three or four times, and I've only read to the lighthouse once, but I can't choose between them now. And there are others that I haven't read or haven't read in many years that might vie for the top place as well. Kendra is a huge Virginia Woolf fan and there's nothing better than watching her going down Virginia Woolf rabbit holes. Number two, a favorite book featuring food. I had trouble with this one. I just am not a foodie. I mean, I like cooking and stuff, and there's a few books that talk about food, but nothing that came to mind in a big way. So I have settled on the Japanese novel Kitchen by Banana Yoshimoto, which I read 20 years ago, maybe, 15 years ago. I don't remember a blessed thing about it, but apparently there's a lot of food in it. <laughs> written in 1988, translated into English in 1993 by Megan Bacchus. The protagonist, Mikage Sakurai, is a young Japanese woman. She loves kitchens and she gets a job as a culinary teacher's assistant. And it goes from there. I don't remember any of that, but that's my answer for this tag. Obviously, I need to reread it. <sighs> Moving on. I'm even going to do more of a cop-up for number three. Favorite fantasy book. I loathe genre fiction, and maybe especially fantasy, so I don't have an answer for this one, but if Kendra would allow it, I would be happy to tell you about some of my erotic fantasies, but I know that that would probably ruin her birthday completely, so let's just go to prompt number four, shall we? Favorite book set in Appalach Appalachia? I better find out how to pronounce that. <laughs> Gonna ruin her birthday one way or the other. Appalachia? I think that's right. Appalachia. Oh, I don't think that's right. Appalachia. That's, I don't think that's how Kendra pronounces it, is it? I'm gonna go with this one. Appalachia, okay. Kendra will correct me in the comments below. Appalachia. Favorite book set in Appalachia. I don't have a favorite, but I'm hopeful that I will be reading a, a favorite, which I found out about on Kendra's channel some months ago. It's a gay novel from Appalachia. What is it called? The author is Carter Sickles, which is quite a name in and of itself, and you couldn't get much gayer than this for a title, The Prettiest Star. And he is, he's a rather handsome fellow. The bios I'm finding don't situate him in Appalachia. The story is set in West Virginia, and I'm sure Kendra said that it was. I'm gonna be so embarrassed if I've screwed up uh, yeah, May 19th, 2020, just in a few weeks. It's coming out. Yeah, set in small town Appalachia. So I will be reading it, I think, maybe as early as when it comes out. I'm very excited about it. I wanted to buddy read it with Kendra, but of course, she's so plugged into bookish social media, she read an advanced copy months ago, I think. And that is a one that came into my life. That recommendation came to me directly from Kendra. Five, your favorite audiobook. I have a few favorites, but I'm going to go with this one. The Portable Veblen by Elizabeth McKenzie. I bought the book afterwards, but I did it on audio, and it is one of the best audiobook experiences I have ever had. This novel is published in 2016, and it's a somewhat comic literary novel about a really adorably um, nerdy and delightfully uh, 
strange young woman named Veblen. Her parents named her after the, wasn't he an, a social economist or something? Theodore Veblen. And she talks to squirrels and sometimes they answer back. And, you know, that doesn't sound like a Sean book, but this was so much of a Sean book. And I remember listening to the first chapter while I was walking towards Shinjuku in Tokyo, which is where I live. And I, then and now, have trouble getting into audiobooks and not letting my attention wander. And I was so riveted by the audio narration. <laughs> Her mother, the, the main character's mother, is just, she's over the top, um, smothering, terrible mother, terrible person. And the voice that is used for her and her dialogue, I was just busting a gut and yeah, literally laughing out loud in public while walking down the street with my headphones on. And I mean, I never do that. And I don't usually ever laugh at anything that I read. And this just, I, it was more than funny, but it was hilarious. And it's one of the best audiobooks. Now, I think there's a couple versions of the audiobook. So, let me tell you the one that you need to get. Maybe the other one's good too, but the one that I read was a life-changing audiobook experience. So, wow. Yeah, so the one that you must find. And I see that the other narrators comes up first on Google, but the one that I listened to that just blew me away. The audio narrator was a woman named Lawrence Bouvard. I will put her name in the show notes and it's just phenomenal. <laughs> oh, I'm getting all excited. It's Kendra's birthday. I, it's very exciting. Uh, number six, a book that you read that Kendra recommended. I have read books Kendra's recommended and I may be forgetting some, but the one, the one that I do remember, I won't name it, but it didn't go so well for me, which I think, I think she still loves me. But she has very, very heartily recommended this to me as being a Sean book, so I will be getting to it. It's The Old Drift by Namwale Serpel, who is a Zambian-American novelist, and this is a chunkster, and Kendra was downright effusive in saying, Sean, you have to read it, it's a Sean book, so I will report back. Number seven, a book by your favorite woman author. I think Kendra could probably name my favorite woman author without much prompting, and most of my subscribers could too. It's Barbara Pym, so I will name her debut novel from 1950, Some Tame Gazelle. It is, again, like I was talking about The Portable Veblen, it's hilarious, but it's also more than just a funny story about two spinster sisters living in maybe post-World War II, some little country town or something, and they had never married spinsters, and one of them keeps falling in love with whatever new curate comes to town, and the other one has been carrying a torch for her ex-boyfriend, who is the long-married Anglican priest who lives across the street. And so they have all these romantic foibles and fantasies, and it's hilarious, and there's a lot of food in that. I was gonna name it for the other prompt, but it's absolutely delightful, and I think not every reader experiences this part as deeply as I do, but I think that there is a cry of loneliness that undergirds everything that, to me, pulls me deeper beyond the, the humor into something that I think is quite profound that no other writer I know does as well as Barbara Pym in expressing the loneliness beneath all the dotty, laughable, amusing, and uh, kind of rather strange behavior of these her female protagonists. Absolutely. It's just Barbara, people. It's Barbara. I, I, I love it. And that's one of my very most favorites was her debut. The last thing to say about it is she started working on it when she was a university student. So she would have been in her early 20s maybe when she started working on it. It wasn't published until she was maybe 40 or even older in 1950. Let's see. I guess she would have been... I'm going to make myself try to do math. She was born in 1913 and it was, she was 47 when it was published. I'm going to be so embarrassed if that's not right, but I think so. But she imagined as a young woman that neither she nor her sister Hillary would ever marry, and she imagined them being spinsters living together in their middle age. And that's what the novel's based on. Uh, now, Hillary, her sister, did marry briefly, but uh, Barbara never did, and they did live together later in life. And this was her imagination of what it would be like to be a middle-aged spinster living with her sister. It's just a fabulous book. Okay, Sean, enough Barbara Pym for one tag video. <laughs> Number eight, a book with a character that reminds you of Kendra. I'm going with Alan Bennett's The Uncommon Reader, which is about Queen Elizabeth. 
why does Queen Elizabeth remind me of Kendra? Well, any of you that know her channel know that it's because they both have corgis. The Uncommon Reader is quite a lovely little gently satirical novel about Queen Elizabeth discovering reading literary fiction at the age of 50 or 60 or something and deepening her intellectual capacity. I loved it. I, re I recommend it and, you know, that's the corgi connection. <laughs> uh, number nine, a book with a birthday party in it. I'm going to go with the same one that I had for Eric Carl Anderson's birthday tag, which is The Gay Play, The Boys in the Band by Mark Crowley. Mark Crowley just died this year, didn't he? I seem to remember that. Oh yeah, he just died. Uh, did he die of COVID-19? He died March 7th. No, he died of a heart attack. He died during open heart surgery. How old was he? 84. His play was published in the 1960s and it is about a group of gay men at a birthday party for one of the gay men in the group. The film it had, even though the film was old when I came out in the mid-1980s, that film had such an impact on my understanding of what gay male sociality was like and I didn't think really things had changed much from 1970 when the movie was made to when I was coming out into gay society in the mid-1980s and I think it's a profound play and it centers on a birthday party. It's also got some of the best lines ever. Watch the DVD, it's fabulous. It's very shouty and very gay. Reminds me of, you know, me. <laughs> um, uh, la, 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 la. Number 10, favorite Reading Women Award winner. I forgot to do that. I completely do. I'm going to do that one live. Reading Women Podcast Awards. Well, I haven't read Cantoris by Carolina de Robertis, which is the 2019 winner. I have it on my shelf because, again, very much because of Kendra. Oh, I think it's going to be Pachinko, 2017. I love that one. Oh, Shelter by Jung Yoon, 2016. I love that one. So those two. Um, I would say if I had to choose between those, I would choose Pachinko, but I really, really uh, thought they were both very fine novels. And bonus, a book you would recommend to Kendra. Well, one of them I not only recommended to her, I sent it to her, The Lost Garden by Helen Humphreys, because the death of Virginia Woolf plays a pretty important part of the fictional tale here. And this is one of my favorite books that I've read in recent years. It's called The Lost Garden by Helen Humphreys, set during the Blitz in London, and I won't say any more than that, but uh, Kendra, you have to read it someday. I think you're gonna love it, and we can still be friends if you don't. I will link to my review uh, below. And here is a book that I think might be a Kendra book that I read late last year as a buddy read with Britta. This is a writer from Saskatchewan, my home province in Canada. Sharon Butala, the novel is called Luna. And was this her debut? I think it might have been. Anyway, published 1988, set in the ranching community of southern Saskatchewan about a group of prairie women and it just is such a fabulously full-bodied feminist tale that just swept me off my feet. I was thinking that I wouldn't necessarily like it but I did. I loved it. So Kendra check it out. I also have a video on this which I will link below. That is it for the tag. Sam didn't ask me to tag anybody but I'm gonna anyway. I don't know who he tagged but I'm thinking of people like Britta Bowler, Mel of Mel's Bookland Adventures, Doris of all the books, and of course, Greg of Supposedly Fun. And anybody out there who likes these tags, these are great tags. Good job, Sam. You know, I'm going to open it up to the booktube universe. Happy birthday again, Kendra. Love ya. Mean it. Thanks for watching. <laughs>